A warm greeting, today is Tuesday, April 30, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. Today, on May 1, there are two weeks left until the official start of the hurricane season in the eastern Pacific region. In the Atlantic, it officially begins on June 1. However, starting on May 15, the National Hurricane Center will also begin issuing tropical outlooks to monitor any system that has the potential for cyclonic development. As the hurricane season approaches, I wanted to talk about which areas could see some cyclonic development during the month of May. Definitely, first for the eastern Pacific region, where the hurricane season begins on May 15, but also in the Atlantic region and the Caribbean Sea because in recent years we have seen storms develop before the official start of the hurricane season. In the last nine years, in eight of them, we have seen the formation of the first tropical storm before June 1. Considering how warm the sea surface temperatures are in the Atlantic Ocean, it is possible that this year we will again see the development of some subtropical or tropical storms in the North Atlantic or perhaps some development in the Western Caribbean region. If we analyze the climatology a bit, you can see that in the Eastern Pacific region, starting in mid-May, we begin to see an increase in cyclonic activity until it peaks during the summer months. In comparison, you can see that in the Atlantic region, the vast majority of cyclonic activity actually occurs during the period from June to November, although you can see that starting on May 15, we have also seen the development of some tropical storms and hurricanes in the Atlantic. In this image, you can see the development of some tropical storms that have formed before the official start of the hurricane season. This image shows us the storms that have formed since 2015, with the last one developing in 2023 during January. But I also wanted you to see that at least in the Atlantic region, the vast majority of these storms have formed in the subtropical Atlantic, with the exception of some that have developed just southeast of the United States. In the case of 2018, we had Tropical Storm Alberto, which developed in the waters of the Western Caribbean and then moved over the Gulf of Mexico. And although tropical systems that form in May in the Atlantic typically do not gain much strength, we have had some tropical storms that have affected land areas. For example, in the United States in 2012, Tropical Storm Beryl moved just east of the Florida Peninsula, and although it did not strengthen into a hurricane, it did generate some heavy rains and flooding in some southeastern sectors of the United States. A week ago, on April 24, the National Hurricane Center marked a non-tropical low-pressure system in the North Atlantic that had a low probability of becoming a subtropical system. You can see that in the satellite animation, this low-pressure system did acquire quite a bit of organization and was developing thunderstorms near the center. This low-pressure system was our first candidate to develop into the first cyclone of the season. Although the National Hurricane Center did not officially classify this low-pressure system as a subtropical system, once this hurricane season ends, the National Hurricane Center will analyze whether this disturbance became a subtropical cyclone. But officially, we have not yet seen the development of the first tropical or subtropical storm. And although we have seen an increase in the frequency of storms developing before June 1st in recent years, it is very likely that this is due to the fact that we currently have better meteorological observations, including satellites that allow us to identify and track some of these low-pressure systems that can form into subtropical cyclones for a short period of time. In fact, the National Weather Service in the United States was conducting a study in 2021 to assess the probability of advancing the start of the hurricane season in the Atlantic to May 15, similar to the start of the hurricane season in the eastern Pacific. However, after studying historical data, it was found that during the second half of May, only 1% of cyclonic activity occurs compared to the rest of the hurricane season. Furthermore, it is very rare to see a hurricane developing in the Atlantic during the month of May. The last one was in 1970 with Hurricane Alma. After these results, the World Meteorological Organization has determined that the hurricane season will continue to be from June 1 to November 30 for the Atlantic Basin. The conclusion is that the cyclonic activity that has historically been seen before June 1 is basically insignificant, and at the moment there is no reason to advance the hurricane season. But remember, in the last nine years, in eight of them, we have seen the formation of the first system before the official start of the season. And contrary to what we might think, the development of a storm before the official start of the season does not correlate with the anticipated cyclonic activity for that year. In fact, when evaluating the seasons of the last 40 years, it has been noted that the seasons that have seen the development of the first storm before June 1st statistically have not turned out to be more active seasons. Although it may be representative of more tropical storms that develop, but not in the case of hurricanes. This is another reason why the hurricane season will continue to be from June 1st to November 30th. But in this video, I wanted to delve a little into which areas we should monitor during the month of May, where a tropical storm may develop. One of the areas we will be monitoring by mid-May will be the western region of the Caribbean Sea, 
as well as the waters in the eastern Pacific region, south of Mexico and west of Central America. This is because a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation could generate a Central American gyre by mid-May. In history, we have seen the development of some low-pressure systems, either in the waters of the Western Caribbean Sea, but mostly in the waters of the Eastern Pacific. One must be attentive, especially when temperatures in the Caribbean Sea region are at record levels. Currently, the Caribbean Sea region is experiencing record high sea surface temperatures that are higher than we have ever recorded in history. This may somewhat aid any low-pressure system associated with the Central American gyre that develops and is associated with the Madden-Julian oscillation phase. Looking back at history, during the first 10 days of May, we have indeed seen the development of two tropical cyclones in the waters of the Caribbean Sea. However, this data is from over 100 years ago, so we have only seen two cyclones developing in the Caribbean Sea, making the probability of seeing the development of a cyclone during the first 10 days of May extremely low. But by mid-May, we have seen an increased probability of seeing some development either in the waters southeast of the Atlantic or in the western region of the Caribbean Sea. However, the eastern Pacific region usually becomes active before the Atlantic, and this is the area we will be monitoring for mid to late May. By the last 10 days of May, we see an increasing concentration of cyclonic development towards southern Mexico. The probability of development in this area increases towards the end of May and the beginning of June, while for the Atlantic, by the end of May, there are few systems that have managed to form, either in the Western Caribbean or in waters southeast of the United States. Taking into consideration the climatology, plus the phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that will move over the eastern Pacific, it appears that the first area we will be monitoring during mid to late May will be the waters in the eastern Pacific just south of Mexico, Guatemala, and El Salvador. But remember, this is a long-term projection. We currently do not have any threat of cyclonic development. I simply wanted to give you a preview of the areas we will be monitoring before the official start of the hurricane season in the Atlantic and during the beginning of the eastern Pacific season. Well, that's all for this video. I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then, click on the bell icon to receive notifications when we upload new videos. Count on me to keep you informed throughout the hurricane season. See you later.